Making a Turkey Blind Using Salvage Aluminum Tent Poles, William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, Converting Deer to Dunner for Pennies per Pound, and so we do all sorts of outlandish outdoor stuff. And I'm also the author of a new business book, Create Your Own Job Security, that promotes individual entrepreneurship, that you can have a job that you create anytime you want it to raise money anytime you need it. I have my things laid out again. And as you can see, the cloth is sufficiently long that I can make another blind. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this cloth as well as poles made out of two different materials and two different diameters. I'm going to go a little bit modern on this I'm going to go a little bit modern on this assembly and actually use a dowel that will fit inside the largest piece and also some spray paint to paint the aluminum in steel. So we're going to get started doing this and the first thing I'm going to do is to cut this longest piece of cloth and align things and then we'll paint up the poles. Alright, that be done. And since I have drop cloth right here I see no reason not to paint my poles right here. As it turned out, we had just about enough to get these poles painted. Uh, some are not absolutely completely painted, but at least the sheen is knocked off, so they're not bright white anymore. Plus, these are going to be on the inside of the blind anyway. While the paint dries, I have some wood issues to resolve. One of which is my drive hammer. This is the instrument I use to actually set the stakes in the soil. And this hole is the same diameter as the top of the thin tubing I'm driving. Since I'm going to be driving aluminum, it's particularly needed. So, what I'm going to do since I have three different sizes now, is to square this surface here, then drill a new hole from this direction for one size pipe, and a hole in this direction for another size pipe, and so we can have one tool to accomplish all three tasks. So, you know, that's got it about right. I'm going to do this surface the same way. From the pieces of wood I've cut before, I'll be able to use these two for the end pieces and then two full length uh, for the splices between these two poles. I reduce them on the grinder to these just barely into the poles and from this stage I can take them down on the belt sander pretty quick. And now we'll just grind to the proper diameter until we can get one that actually inserts into the pole. Now we can glue our steel poles and allow this to set whilst we work on the wood for some of the other parts of the project. Use our familiar shoe goo here. This goes in the top of a pole.
Now these will be allowed to dry and then we'll drill them and pin them. Our aluminum tent poles represent some other challenges. Uh, this is a piece of poplar which is a good strong wood and it will go inside here about this far is what I want and then we'll need one that will go in here as well as insert in this middle section which is a little bit overly long so I'm going to cut perhaps this much away and then we'll use the excess here to go inside this pole and then pin it in several places this pole will be the strongest part of the assembly and be in the exact center of our shooting rail to reduce waste on this material I'm going to keep this stick hole and I'm going to work it down until I get one section that will go in one rod about three to four inches long and then cut that one and then make the next section and cut and then the next one and cut and so on uh, to keep the rod nearly as full length as I can. I now have a good fit so this will insert here and uh, now we'll just glue it up and cut it off and proceed to the next piece. All of the work on cutting and reducing the size of the dowels has now been done. And so we'll just glue and insert and let it all set for several hours before we attempt to drill. Because I couldn't get a good size match on my drill bits, with one size of those aluminum tent poles I'm going to go ahead and use the steel poles to support the rail and so I'm going to go ahead and drill and then use this bit to have a good firm set in the rail just used some of my 25 year old wood putty here which has been revitalized with acetone uh, to fill some small cracks in the salvage piece of wood so now when I allow it to dry I'll be able to sand it and give a more nearly smooth and potentially water resistant finish now we can just trim the wood off of our steel poles okay We have just two of these to do this time. Now we're drilling our steel tubes and this is the tube that will be spliced into another tube like it. And so this way we're able to use these shorter tubes even though they don't have metal to metal fit. We'll drill holes and set this in then insert the plug in the adjoining tube so we unify the whole construction. We are getting to some of the final stages here. Our drive hammer has now got a hole drilled suitable for this larger size pipe which will go right here in the shooting rail. And I needed to cut a dowel to go in the top here to reinforce it. And I had some American chestnut from a fallen limb from a live tree and so I cut a dowel from it and this incidentally is what the tree looked like and it was so cracked in the piece I used up here that really I couldn't get anything else much bigger from it that was sound except a dowel so we went ahead and used it for that 
and we've cut us another piece of lath out of a 2x4 so we have backing for our cloth so we have some painting and fitting and putting together and cutting the pins we're now ready for our painting and a spar varnish here really in good shape now one thing hasn't fared so well the wood putty that we diluted with acetone is actually attacking this plastic container so I'm going to need to either toss this or find some piece or find a small glass jar uh, to store this material in because it's just not stable in plastic. I'm affixing our cloth to the shooting rail and I'm about to attach the retaining strip. I had to tack the cloth down to the rail itself so there are a few small nails uh, in it now and I'm about to set the screws but because I can't see my pilot holes anymore I'm going to go ahead and take the precaution of re-drilling uh, those holes out before I set those larger screws just to prevent any possibility of that wood splitting. Okay, that's one in there. We'll do the other two exactly the same way. And now we have our screws in. I'm just going to go ahead and paint this and then let this set and then do our hot wax in the seam here. And then we'll be ready to set this thing up. So I'm thinking maybe about 4 o'clock this afternoon, I'll actually have it in the woods. Once again, we are in blind installing mode. I've got my blind rolled up here. And we have a saw that we'll take with us. And we're going to go down and put this blind in another location on this property. I am where I want to be. We have two roads. Now with vegetation in them, but I will come back and mow these roads. They intersect here, one coming straight away where the camera is pointed, and one left and right passing by a few yards away. And Hound Dog and I are going to be about putting up this blind. Although I'm in the woods and it is turkey season and legal, etc., 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 I'm probably not going to hunt this evening. But just get this blind in and leave and come back and hunt tomorrow. The central stake of the blind here is going to be driven in to where it's looking straight down that road. So. Go ahead and set it. Drive hammer in place here. I've now put the shooting rail in, and you can see it's the central stake is supporting it, but I need to drive it down again about another six inches. Okay, that is now in position, so I can set two more stakes. Okay, I seated that one, and we do the one on the other side. We're putting these things in the ground 
oh, more or less a foot deep. So, yeah, they aren't going anywhere. The wooden slices in the poles were strong enough to allow the thin steel tubing to be driven into the soil. Those aluminum poles are starting to flare and split out where they're joined. Uh, they're still plenty strong, but I think I'm going to leave those standing above the blind. They're painted black and uh, shouldn't be any great problem anyway. Right now, dark is coming on us. I need to get out of here. And we're going to finish this up tomorrow. Right now, dark is coming on us. I've got to get out of here. So we're going to finish this up tomorrow. But we've got the blind in. We've got the stakes set. All I need to do is tie and wire it up and bring the chair in. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're doing good. Well, Hector and I have our blind up, um, and we have these poles driven down, well, actually at least a good foot into solid mineral soil. So these poles are not going anywhere. And even though the aluminum poles did split uh, where they were fit sort of like this, uh, they're solid. They're not going anywhere. And outside of fire and rot, uh, yeah, uh, this blind is in pretty good shape. We've got a little wire, wire tying to do with it, but it's uh, actually doing pretty good right now. And when we come back, I like to put a, a stool in here. But this will leave room for me and, well, even hound dog for that matter. Hector, Hector, and here is said hound doggy. Yep. Yes, I know. You know this is your blind too. <laughs> so on occasion uh, we may hunt it. In fact, for now this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal. Be ethical. Be safe. Goodbye. God bless, and see you next time. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other outdoor books. And these include Extreme Muzzle Loading, and also a series of e-books such as Muzzle Loaders for Hunters, as well as hunting with muzzle loading shotguns and smoothbore muskets. Now, the aluminum poles would have been stronger had I cut off the mating ends and used a wood dowel to join them together. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 750 videos, you can go to www.hoviesmith.com. For information on my business books, you can go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. For more information on my novel, movie, and screenplay, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.com. But now, this is Hovie Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.